We don't take different takes. We just roll with the first one, no matter what. Even Good. if it sucks. Because <laughs> it's raw. <wrong>. It's raw. <laughs> they weird. get what they get. It's more like you're hanging out with us if we're messing it up and moving along with it. I brought these in case I'm too tired. Yeah. Race weekends are long. A lot of effort. We were, I was up to like two something last night. I know you texted me at two. This is Ray Shake. He is the technical director at RTR Motorsports. But he's really just a badass that keeps our cars running, keeps all the other people in line at the track. Spiritual advisor, maybe? Sometimes. Sometimes. When Vaughn's not there. Yeah, he's a good <laughs> spiritual advisor. <laughs> yeah. He keeps the vibe high, for sure. I always wanted to do a video that showed the data and how we kind of use it to kind of help set up the car and also for me to realize what I'm doing on track because I'm only doing what needs to be done at that moment or at least what I think it is. And then I'll go back and look at the data and be like, oh, that doesn't look like what I'm doing, but the data never lies. Like, there's times where I'm like, nah, it's doing this. And you're like, nah, man, you're just not high enough in the RPM to use nitrous or whatever. Yep. <laughs> Last night at Seattle, I ended up winning. So I wanted to load up the winning lead and chase and kind of show you the data. Obviously we wouldn't have made changes for this because we finished the weekend like this, but this was pretty much as fast as the car was all weekend, as hooked up as the car was all weekend, and probably, well, at the end of the event, this is the most laps I've done, so I've had the most practice. So in theory, these would be the best runs. In this map here, we have TPS. RPM, what's the orange? Is that Brake. brake? That's when you're on the brakes. Yes. And the brake is not like sensitive, it's just to let you know the lights are on basically. So like whenever I'm pushing it uh, over like what, 50 PSI brake pressure or something. Yeah, it's, it's just very when low. the brakes are being applied. So it's not yeah. pressure based, so it's not gonna look smooth. And then uh, nitrous control output. So it lets us know like when I'm using the nitrous, when I'm in the nitrous, and how much nitrous is basically pulsing into the motor. Cause we gotta make it flow in somehow instead of hitting it with like all of it at once down low. Right. That would be bad. Cause then you'll cry. And the motor will probably not be pumped. Oh, it'll be fine. Last night we ran the motor like 288 water temp. It was close to 300. It didn't even care. It cooled down and ran better after that. Yep. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Okay, so we're gonna run through this at full speed and then kind of go back and dissect a couple things here. <clears throat> I'll talk about it as and kind of explain it as we run through it full speed. Okay, so I'll leave the line, go through the chicane. You'll see me pedaling it to put the grip down. There's a shift, and now I'm rolling back in it, and then I basically smash it, full nitrous, full power to get it into the bank. There'll be a quick dip to breathe and set it up on the bank, and then I'm lots of throttle throughout the bank. You'll see quick hand brakes there to get the car to rotate back on power, get it out to outer zone two, float it into three, get hit, try to save it on the throttle, get it back in the line where I need to be, and then I'm just basically feeling it and pedaling it through the rest of the turn. There's a downshift there, like right off leaving the bank, so you'll see the RPM climb there throughout the rest of the run. What do you look at on, on this map when I'm like, hey man, I need some more grip, like we, we're not that fast. If I told you after this run, like, oh, we gotta hook the car up, like this dude's pulling on me, or I'm saying, oh, I'm struggling, like the car won't light up through it. I feel like I need more power. I would look at the RPM rise. First I'd ask you where. Yep. But normally I would probably see it already. And then I would look at it and then discuss with the chassis engineer what I'm gonna do and what he can do to complement it. So we work together to balance it out to give you a car that feels the same or feels like what you would like it to feel like. Yeah, so for me, like, too, I'm, I'm thinking and when I'm driving it, like, gearing, if I need more wheel speed or less wheel speed. So, like, more wheel speed will kind of make the car have more angle, but it also wears more tire out. And then also, like, if you have too much wheel speed, and we have this probably more often, we're looking at the low RPM end of it, where, like, we're climbing through the RPM, and we maybe want to shorten the gear because the RPM is too low and the power band is really up top and mid-range. So if we're falling out of it, I'll be like, hey, Ray, I'm falling out of it. And he'll kind of look at the gearing to see if the, the gearing's the easiest change. Correct. And then kind of we're looking at, oh, hey, can you give me a little more juice down low or something? And I, I kind of hold off on that so that I don't have Ray always jamming more power into the car. <laughs> He's like, it's fine, it's fine. I'm like, ah, but we could do it with less power. It's probably better for everything. <laughs> Obviously, we had nailed this by now. And the car was set up great. And you'll see just the RPM hanging itself. Like, what's the RPM on the bank? Like, 
while we're full throttle for a long period. 8,000. And we, our peak, peak RPM that we want to see is like 9,000. And I think we maybe dip it right there for a second. And that's just a clutch in scenario. Oh, we got a 91, 71 there. But the key is, like I said, is you want to be able to have enough power where you're in the nitrous all the time and it's not really shutting off. And then also at the same time, like you're not blowing through it and you're not having this really slow climb because when the climb of RPM is really slow, the car feels super hooked up. Well, sometimes drivers need that. Yeah, To be sure. that hooked up so you commit <clears throat> yep. and it just gets you in a psychological frame of mind that will allow some magic to happen. Yep. Because if you can just pedal it the whole time. Oh, no, I definitely yeah. don't ever really want a car like that. Mm, no. Obviously, you can saying, see. Some people like it and nah, I'll take it away from you. Like with the traces, you can see every time I do something, which is like this would be like a handbrake or a, a lift, when I go back, I go immediately to full throttle. And then when I'm in a spot where there is enough power, which would be the infield, like here and on, like you can see I'm feeling it through this section. You know, like I'm rolling in and out of it and like feeling the grip and finding it because it has so much more power in third gear because you have torque multiplier and it's a slower part of the track so in that part of the track like i'm feeling and pedaling it a lot more than on the bank i could floor it through all of this but it would be slower lots more yeah, angle you're pumping it in pumping and, the grip into it yeah and it would smoke the tires like they would wouldn't make it two laps now we'll load up a chase run and we'll kind of explain the difference between the two overlaid and then we'll kind of look at the chase run by itself so if you look at this map and we go down to the bottom but that's going to be the speed and the blue is a lead and the white is a chase. So you can kind of pay attention to the speed on entry. We both enter a very similar time and this would be Dylan's run. So we dip down in speed when I'm chasing. And then the speed is pretty much the same across this whole track. Our cars were pretty equal. And then there's a little breakaway for the lead where the accident was. You'll see me kind of have a faster pull through there. Um, and that's simply because we get hit and I'm, he's off track at that point. So we're just getting through and finishing it. But if you look at <clears throat> the throttle commitment and how we drive it, which would be up top here, it's very different. It's a lot more pedaling. So you see like the green, like normally on the normal on the other run, which a lead run, it's pretty much flat through here. I yeah. guess it, it's kind of similar, honestly, for this run. Our cars must have been really equal because I could like, basically run a lead run behind them. But there's a lot more pedaling basically in the chase than there is in the lead. There's a lot more handbrakes, a lot more... Actually, the brakes are pretty similar still too because our cars were equal. So on some some runs, there'll be a lot more braking in the chase because yeah, I'm like, foot braking. Yeah, like with a slow driver like, like who would a slow driver be? We didn't have really any slow drive. I guess Rome was the slowest yesterday, probably. If you were to pick out a... The slowest? Ever. Oh, probably Forrest. Yeah. He wasn't that slow here this weekend. He can go fast, too, though. He can go fast. I've seen him go fast. But normally, he's a little slower. Kazuya was pretty slow on the run-up, so that was interesting. But, like, you end up throwing it in and you use the brakes. And you just use the brakes until you can't use the brakes anymore. <laughs> and you're going to run them over. And then use the handbrake, so you'll see a lot of like choppy bits because I you have left have to let off the throttle on your handbrake, so the TPS dips down, kind of like this section here. I probably had a couple more handbrakes in the chase. The white trace, I was floored, and then dips are bigger on the chase runs. If you look at these, these are like handbrake pulls where I'm slowing down the car throughout the map there. They're all kind of the same handbrake pull, just in different spots, where if you overlay like my normal lead run, they'll be in similar spots every time. The chase just makes it so it's all over the place. And then down here, you can see the nitrous. Whenever I'm driving it, I go wide open throttle, and I lift, and there's a lot, very little pedaling, but you can see this section over here, like that's where I'm pedaling, and the nitrous is ramping in slowly, so I'm utilizing like the power and how it's delivered to do something at that point, which is, I think, probably just get myself up on the wall a little tighter. Oh, it's good to watch. Look at the RPM, too. Like, the RPM in the chase is way lower because I'm just grunting through the power to be able to basically stay up on him and, and let him do his thing so that I could then charge again. So, like, those yeah, are breathes. See, yeah, you can see here where your RPM's just up and consistent, and then here you just drop down and as soon as you get back on it rap. you can definitely see if you look at the rpm trace which that's kind of directly related to the wheel speed of the car that's what's going to kill tires and whatnot too so chase runs typically use a lot less tire than a lead run what else do you look for in terms of like the motor and stuff like when you're looking at data because you plug in all the time and pull data to make sure everything's staying alive and 
going to run forever. Like the, the preventative maintenance of pulling data, like every couple laps and seeing what the motor's doing, what the charging system's doing, what the water temp's doing. You can kind of see what's happening throughout the event. Like we had an alternator failure at the event and he was able to basically say like, oh yeah, when we plugged in, we looked at this, the voltage was dropping and things weren't powering the way they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and basically the motor got really, really hot because of it. Yeah, that sucked. So basically everything's prioritized for engine running in that condition, kill everything, just allow you to complete a lap. So we were down to like eight volts and change. Oh my God. But everything's been tuned at that point to understand what's required to run the engine in case of a failure. Yeah, the double pump steering probably doesn't help that either. No, not at all. It was bad. <laughs> that thing, when you're putting a lot of steering inputs in, those pumps together probably pull 140 amps. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Which will suck that. Like, most cars only have 100 amp alternators, and the power steering pumps would overpower them by, like, 50%. Right. So normally, I'll just go in and I'll look at, make sure we got oil pressure, all this color gradients based on temperature. Oh, cool. So, more closer to red, the higher the oil temp. I'm but the pressure looks great. On. There's literally no anomalies anywhere, really. Yeah, and then each sample point is a dot. So, I look at all the temps, pressures for everything, make sure I don't have any problems. Go into here, look at currents. So, yeah, that's all the voltage for everything, like at how much amperage is pulling. So you can kind of see if you're going to have any sort of electrical failure because it's pulling more amps than normal. Yep, so I can see everything like there is a fan coming on. So I can see all the inrush current for it that I'll look at. I can tell if there's air in the cooling, cooling system based on... Yeah, you'll have like all bubbles the, and yeah, spikes. Yeah, if I got a drop in water pump current, then I know there's air in it. So and then we have that. eight individual O2 sensors, so... That was a bunch not working right now in this data, so... Yeah, either way. There's eight of them. Each runner of the header gets one, so that way you can trim each cylinder individually to make each cylinder perfect. Because like you'd be surprised, especially on V8s, like how big of a discrepancy there can be between cylinders. Like sometimes there's twenty five percent difference between cylinders. So if you're spraying it with a bunch of nitrous, you know, once the jet, the nitrous jets get bigger too, and it's like just manufacturing issues. Yeah, because like when the jet is so big, when they machine it, if it's slightly different, you might have forty more horsepower in one cylinder. So that's even bigger discrepancies. So having it in every cylinder makes it so that you can dial it in like pretty much to run perfect. You can look at every single cylinder individual, and then if you have like a misfire or something, it'll show immediately in there. You could even tell with a temp gun when we have a misfire because the one header will be cold from all the nitrous spraying into it and not firing. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is the O2s. Yeah, so these are all the individual lambdas, one screen. That is data that's slow, slow sensor. Okay. So not super good. This is most likely slow sensor, so everything's just a little bit different. But you yeah. can't count 100% on the data. You just gotta average it. Yeah, but when something's wrong, you see it pretty much. Yeah, you can find it pretty quick. So yeah, also like rev limiter tuning, if we need more RPM or need to change something, like he's able to do that on here, but vi visualize and see if we're even using it or needing it. Because sometimes I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm falling out of the nitrous, let's say. Like, so at a high RPM when the nitrous shuts off, I'll be like, oh, I'm falling out of it. We might tighten it because we can't run it to the rev limiter. <laughs> right. <laughs> blow that thing, blow the intake manifold apart. Right, because the difference between where it shuts off and the actual hard cut, you need a pretty big space there because if it's spraying any nitrous when you're near the hard cut, that's when shit goes goes uh, bad. <laughs> ben throwing tacos and butterflies. Yeah, the throttle bodies will all bend. What was the deal with uh, James's nitrous yesterday? James lost nitrous and won a battle at the biggest track in the entire season. Down like 300 something horse. Yeah, and he won the battle. He didn't even go to fourth gear on the bank. Yeah, he was, ran third. I also like to turn it off. Yeah, I told, because the purge wouldn't work. And that right. was the thing, and you can't tell. So I can't just test fire solenoids into the engine. Right. Could Go. he have tried it in the burnout box? Yeah, that's what he did, and he knew. And it didn't work. I was like, purge it with your foot yeah. in the burnout box. You'll know right yeah. away. Like, it's going to be good or it's not. And he's like, it's not. Super fat. It's like, and he's like, it's misfire and it's bad. <laughs> no yeah. power. I can't turn it off. I'm like, yeah, just turn it off. So, right. yeah, so we run fourth gear, and I'm to the wood most of the bank, like you guys saw, and... 
he did it without nitrous, which is like probably 300 horsepower down. Yeah. Maybe at more. Least. The torque, even more. Way more. <laughs> and he just didn't even shift to fourth, ran the bank in third, and downshifted the second in the infield. It had zero runtime in that configuration. No runtime. And just like made it work, won the battle, beat Odie, beat which Odie. is like <laughs> arguably one of the fastest, most powerful 100%. cars. And just was a badass, dude. He just accepted that challenge and <laughs> did the damn thing. He did. I can't. I, like, I watched the it back. That's the most impressive thing I've seen in a long time. I was like obviously in the mode trying to win, and then after the event, I, someone explained it to me, and I went back and watched it. And I'm like, it doesn't even look that bad. Right. It doesn't even look. That, I mean, why are we even running nitrous? <laughs> Ray's like, I'm gonna just delete 200 horsepower from these cars. Yeah, just run it in third. <laughs> Done. But yeah, so what was wrong with the nitrous for that? Honestly, when the car came back, I put so many people on every single spot on the car. Oh, just change everything. Like, from the back to the front. So, like, nitrous filters, anything. Like, mechanical stuff. I was under the dash. There were so many people on every aspect of the car. But then it worked. Tough to say what it was. But, yeah, then it worked. Yeah, when you only have, like, four or six minutes to turn around a car. Yeah, it's something we will we'll regroup at the workshop and try to replicate it. Yeah, so that way we know it failed. That's crazy, though. I can't believe he was able to do a lap like that. But anyways, again, just wanted to show you guys some data, introduce you to Ray. This dude keeps my car running all the time, throughout everything. Even when it's blown up, he figures out a way to get me out there and keep it running. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of people. Should have been packed good and was like, when I saw the water shooting out of the car, the stream, <laughs> looking like a freaking jet ski. Dude, it was. It had a little jet ski pisser on the back. Yeah. Uh, I went over to Chris, and Chris was like, man, I don't normally run my visor down, and I ran it down for that run, and it's really good, because he grabbed his helmet, and it was just covered in coolant yep. or water. So that's all the data that we have from the last few runs. That's all of it. That's all That of we it. could show. Lots of other stuff going on we can't talk about. Yeah, like how we utilize wheel speed sensors and traction control, traction control torque management. Torque management. And uh, GPS based, yeah, everything. We, we run the torque converter in the rear. Right. For the run against Dylan. Yeah. But we take it offline. It's just got to I've been spread. trying to get rid of the torque converter and put a gear vendor's overdrive in it, but yeah. Ray and I have been arguing about it a little bit. There's a conflict of partners with off road. Yeah. It's kind of cool though. We did have those traces in there, but I'm really floored the whole time. And it's Ray's just doing it. Oh, I skew all the information that goes out to Kevin Wallace. Yeah. I just floor boxes. it, and then Ray just sits there with a little button and just brings the th throttle down as he's watching me. Yeah, I'm actually connected to the car the whole time around the track. Yeah. So we got we disconnect the steering. That's why I have to have my phone with me. 5G. Yeah, 5G <laughs> hooks it up, and he just like. That's why you see him stick his middle finger out the window. He's not actually I'm steering not actually the car. I'm not doing anything. Yeah. That's why we have two power steering pumps. Yeah, one for me, one for you. Yeah. I'll just switch it over. Exactly. You're out. <laughs> I can't drive in the car, though, but... Yeah, I'm, well, he's the real driver. I'm a gamer. Yeah. Actually, I'm not even that. sim driver. He's on the yeah. sim magic thing over there. You think he's just uh, playing the game, but he's really driving my car. Okay, if you've ever paid attention to that little fun ever tour area... We're actually driving the cars around the track. <laughs> These dudes, they're just pretty faces. That's right. 